You're listening to the Accenture Insurance Influencers Podcast. Hello, I'm your host, Igrani Yu. And in today's episode, I'll continue my conversation with Ryan Stein about how automated vehicles are changing the auto insurance landscape. My name is Ryan Stein. I'm the Executive Director of Auto Insurance Policy and Innovation at Insurance Bureau of Canada. Ryan, welcome. Thanks for having me. Ryan, you've talked about how automated vehicles challenge some of the assumptions inherent in auto insurance, namely that humans are at fault uh, if there is an accident, uh, and that if there is an accident involving an automated vehicle, you could be looking at a product liability case rather than straightforward auto insurance. I wonder if in some cases, insurers might be a little bit reluctant to make these changes because automated vehicles haven't been widely adopted. I'm curious what happens as soon as one automated vehicle hits the road, because now you have that chance of an automated vehicle being in an accident, and therefore the current law is not being equipped to deal with that situation. That's right. So, you know, the, what the reason IBC came out with the paper, and we developed this paper with a, a working group of, of insurance company representatives, the reason we developed the paper was because if you wait for there to be a mass of automated vehicles on the road, it's it's way too late. It's important to start looking at these issues and addressing it as these vehicles start coming off the assembly line one at a time. If you can avoid people that are injured in a collision having to go through a more lengthy claims process, which by the way, claims processes are never, like no one wants to be in that situation to begin with. So you want the laws to make it hopefully as fair and as quick as possible. Um, and when you see a new type of risk, in this case being automated vehicles and you know the threat of people having to go through product liability litigation, you want to be able to address it sooner rather than later. And there already is an example of a government who's who's looked into this issue, and it's 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 the United Kingdom government. Where last year they passed legislation to address this exact issue, they realized that people are going to start using automated vehicles when there's a collision. It's not going to be as clear cut anymore. Was it the person who caused it? Was it the technology that caused it? Was it some combination of both? And the whole process of figuring out what the cause was. And then compensating the injured people was going to be a lot more complex, and they didn't want people to be sitting through this sort of to what could look like a never-ending process so they could just get compensated and move on with their lives. So the government passed a piece of legislation that created a single insurance policy, and the single insurance policy will cover uh, a liability claim or provide coverage if the automated vehicle caused the collision, regardless of if it was the person operating it or the automated technology that was the cause. And what does that mean for someone who'd be involved in an accident involving an automated vehicle? So what that would mean is the person who was injured, you know, they just have to show I was injured and that vehicle caused it. They don't have to get into this whole negotiation. Oh, was it the person or was it the technology? And then you have different insurance companies representing all the different interests involved. It was to try to make the claims process work in an automated world as it works now. Now, once the insurer of the automated vehicle pays out the claim to the injured person and compensates them, if it turns out that the cause was actually the technology, not the person who owned that vehicle, the insurance company who paid out the claim could try to recover their payment from the vehicle manufacturer technology provider. And so that product liability discussion takes place. It's just you separate the injured person from that. So you compensate them, they can move on with their life. And then the insurance company and the vehicle manufacturer technology provider will figure out exactly what the cause was. And, you know, if they need to transfer money back and forth between the two of them, they will um, they will do that. It, it's ultimately trying to, you know, fix that claims issue. You don't want people who are injured having to be in a protracted and costly product liability litigation. The single insurance policy addresses it. And IBC's working group and IBC as a whole believe that there's a lot of merit there and you know the 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 proposal that we put in in our paper, it you know has some differences, but is modeled um, on the the UK uh, solution. I understand that IBC looked at some other options too. What were some of the other approaches that you considered? The working group of insur- insurance companies, you know, they looked at different ways of dealing with vehicle automation. So the first one was just status quo, you know, keeping the legislation and the regulation as is. And and they decided that that wasn't adequate, that people would get stuck in complex and protracted product liability litigation, that 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 just wasn't acceptable. The public policy around insurance should be about fair and quick compensation. They then looked at full no-fault insurance, 
And what that means is there's no more liability. People don't sue each other anymore. You collect, if you're injured, you get all your medical and your income replacement expenses from your own insurance company. And in an automated world, they view that as, well, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, If you take out the whole suing aspect, then you get rid of that product liability issue and people will just get compensated by their own insurer. So um, in a world where all vehicles are automated, no fault insurance might make a lot of sense. But in a world where these vehicles are going to be coming off the assembly line one at a time, it doesn't make sense because you can't have, you don't want to force the no fault type of insurance on everybody. And there'll still be lots of people driving conventional vehicles. So you need an insurance policy that works for both conventional vehicles and automated vehicles. So I guess there are two reasons why our members like the single insurance policy. One is it's a way of dealing, of making sure that people who are injured do not get caught in a protracted and costly product liability uh, claim or litigation against a vehicle manufacturer or technology provider that these people can go through the typical motor vehicle collision claims process. That is important. That's number one. Number two, it can work with the existing auto insurance policies that are on conventional vehicles now. So you don't, people who buy conventional vehicle, have conventional vehicles will be able to still buy the same type of policy that has some liability protection and some uh, coverage for medical benefits and, and income replacement. So I guess the number one thing is it, it solves the It makes sure that people can get fair and quick compensation, and the single insurance policy can also coexist with the existing auto insurance policies that are in place now. Right. And so that's that's the first part of the framework, which is the single insurance policy. Uh, The second part called for a a data sharing arrangement with vehicle manufacturers, owners, and insurers. Uh, So what does that entail? The, the data sharing arrangement is really about after a collision, the vehicle, these vehicles collect a lot of data. And after a collision, no doubt some of that data will help determine what the cause of that collision was. So we think that you know vehicle manufacturers should share with the vehicle owners or the people involved in the collision and their insurance companies a prescribed set of data to so that would help determine what the cause was. So for ex- instance was the automated, you know, status of the vehicle on or off, you know, what was the speed of the vehicle, the the location of where the collision happened. You know, some specific data points will really help determine what the cause was and if you can figure out the cause then you can start going forward with settling the claim and making sure anyone that's injured or needs to repair their vehicle can get compensated and move on quicker. And in the single insurance policy model that we talked about there's an opportunity for the insurer who paid the claim to recover some of the payments associated with, you know, if the cause happened to be technology related. And so knowing whether the vehicle is in automated mode or not, could the person have taken control or not, that'll all help determine, you know, exactly what the cause was and then facilitate any recovery proceedings involving the insurer trying to collect from the vehicle manufacturer technology provider. And so in order to implement or to act on this two-part framework, are insurers equipped to implement that now or are they capabilities that sh- they should be looking at investing in? I, I, I think you know, insurance companies are, are used to uh, managing claims in very complex situations. And, so, and they also um, are excellent at using and analyzing data. So um, while there will be some procedural changes here, if if a provincial government were to implement the single insurance policy approach and the data sharing, I, I don't, insurers will have to adjust their practices accordingly, but I believe they already have the capabilities to do that fairly efficiently. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good news for the industry. Um, I think that insurers might be looking at automated vehicles and autonomous vehicles as equal parts challenge and opportunity. I'm wondering if you could speak to to both of those, maybe starting with the challenges. What challenges do uh, automated vehicles pose to the ways that insurers are doing business today? You know, there's 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 lots of changes that that are going to happen. There will be fewer collisions, but the technology in these vehicles will make repairing and replacing them more expensive. There will be new risks associated with uh, with driving. You know, it could include software and network failure, programming choices, hacking and cybercrime, failure to install updates. Uh, vehicles will record lots of data, and lots of that data will help uh, for you know determining the price of the. Uh, of the risk or of the auto insurance policy, and then also uh, helping uh, settle uh, claims. And then the whole big change that we've talked about, which is technology playing a greater role in the responsibility uh, responsibility of collisions and, and humans playing less of a role. So I, I look at these as, you know, they're changes, but they're also opportunities. So insurance companies developing auto insurance policies that 
deal with the hacking and the cybercrime element or programming and network failure and all those new risks. I mean, that that is that is an opportunity. It's a challenge trying to meet that consumer need, but it's really um, an opportunity. I also think that, you know, just, I guess I should have answered this part. I should have said this first before I went into the more detailed, but vehicle automation, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, it has a lot of potential to really improve road safety. And, and I think that is, you know, a huge uh, benefit uh, for, you know, obviously the insurance industry, but more importantly, the, the public. So the, the more these vehicles get on the road and, and make our roads safer, the better it is for everyone. And that's, that's the real opportunity. Thanks, Ryan. As you say, automated vehicles pose some challenges for the incumbent insurance players, but they also create some pretty compelling opportunities. Thanks for making the time to speak with me today. It was my pleasure. You've been listening to the Accenture Insurance Influencers Podcast. Join me next time as I wrap up my conversation with Ryan Stein from Insurance Bureau of Canada. I'll be asking why it's so important for insurers to be proactive in guiding public policy and legislation for automated vehicles, as well as general principles to keep in mind as far as updating auto insurance policies for new technologies. You've been listening to the Accenture Insurance Influencers Podcast with your host, Igrani Yu. To subscribe and find more episodes, visit Accenture.com slash insurance influencers.